Welcome to this presentation on the topic on the digital certificate of conformity in metrology. Um, before I actually go into the idea of what is this, what do we yeah, describe under a digital certificate, I'd like to give you a very brief agenda of today. So we will have um, overall three presentations. I will start with an introduction to the project group work in Nobomed. Afterwards, my colleague Tatiana Shevelova will give you some basics on the data structure because the, the essential question is always, what is the data structure? What are we describing here? And she will give you a brief overview there um, before I end the presentations of today with uh, some words on application use cases as well as an outlook on our work. Before I start with the actual work, I have a, one slide just on what is Nobomed, because I think we have a few notified bodies in here. We have manufacturers in here, from what I say, and I hope we have a few colleagues from the market surveillance is here as well. I just like to all get you on the same level. So what is Nobomed? I know most of you might know WorldMAC. Uh, Nobomed is relatively new, but it is the European coordination group of the conformity assessment bodies. It is notified by the European Commission. And it is um, notified for the directors 2014 31 EU and 32 EU, which is yeah, basically the non automatic weighing instruments directive and the measurement weighing instruments directive. It was uh, founded and had its first general assembly in 2021. And just to give you an overview of the size, I looked it up in the Nando database. I only typed in um, measuring instrument directives because we normally have uh, notified bodies who work for both directives but this is a bit more representative. So for module B, so type examination, you will find 44 notified bodies on Nando active notified bodies. For module D, it's 43, and for module F, it's 76. So I think overall, it's about um, a bit over 100 notified bodies uh, who are gathered at Nobomed. And um, yeah, one of the first issues on the very first General Assembly in 2021 was the idea of having certificates of conformity um, in legal metrology. And I actually copied that slide that I presented three years ago, and I'd like to get you back where we started as a project group. So our certificates of conformity contain important general information. I think most of you know that. Um, they also contain instrument-specific technical information. And generally, we have one certificate, which is issued for just one manufacturer. Uh, but it is used by many users, several market surveillances throughout the European Union, as well as some or many customers, depending a bit on the type of the measuring instrument. So we can say they are actually very important for our quality infrastructure. They can address different modules. I already said Nobomed deals with different conformity assessment modules, um, BED and so on. So they can be very, very different from each other. And they can also be issued under several directives frameworks. So I already mentioned measuring instruments directive and non-automatic weighing instruments directive, but we actually also have WAMAC certificates, OMLCS certificates, or national certificates. I think we still have that in most of the European countries. This very information, very important piece of information is still partly analog or low-level digital. So comparing the importance of the information that it holds and the importance of the information that we need throughout other processes, it would make sense to have a more machine readable document here than um, just a PDF file. So back then, this part of my presentation brought the discussion of it would be nice to have a project group. And that's what we actually did in 2021. We founded a project group in Nobomed and coming to the overview of what we're doing there. Um, this was, as I said, established at the first General Assembly of Nobomed in 2021. And it focuses on the three big modules in NAVIT and MIT. So we said we have a lot of different conformity assessment modules, but the most typical one are type examination, quality assurance and production process, as well as product verification. And these are all product certification in, on their own working as a certification system within the directives. And we said, okay, this should be the aim of this group to get some machine readable document or description out of this. The group includes contacts from throughout the time, seven to 10 different notified bodies. It's still open to participate if you want to. Um, 
And I can just stress uh, the importance of this group. So I'm here from, from PTB, so representative of notified body 0102. But the idea is to do this together and to work on this together. And I think that's what we're achieving here. And with this, I'm already finished with my very short introduction. In my presentation, I would like to provide you some basics about the data structure related to the Digital Certificate of Conformity. This is abbreviated as DCOC. As you can see from the introduction, the DCOC data structure shall cover specific types of certificates of conformity, which are issued for the legally regulated measuring instruments, and these instruments have been certified within type examination, either in combination with the quality insurance and production process or within product verification. The certification um, is carried out um, under the certification system um, in accordance to the European Directive for Measuring Instruments and European Directive uh, for the Non-Automatic Weighing Instruments. In order to make the DCOC data structure conform to the legislative framework as well um, um, to the framework from the standardization, um, some of the information um, has to be um, considered within the data structure. And on this slide, you can see um, everything that we considered in it. For example, we considered the requirements from the European Directive that I have mentioned before. We considered requirements from the international technical standards related to the product certification, also um, to the uh, conformity assessment. We considered also recommendations from the WellMake Guide 8.3 and Guide 7.2 related to the software and type examination. We also considered some of the basic requirements uh, from the um, OIML certification scheme and some of the instrument related information. Part of such information um, is valid for all instrument types that we considered in our project and some of them are uh, instrument specific but um, considered uh, to be very important um, to be included into certificates. Before I present you the DCUC data structure, I would um, shortly explain what the data structure actually is. The data structure is nothing else as an arrangement of individual machine readable elements, and these elements are used to semantically describe uh, the content elements of a paper based document. In our case, this document is Certificate of Conformity. Through such description, um, each individual content element uh, can be um, machine readable and this enables um, the document or in our case certificate of conformity uh, to be digitized. On this slide you can see a typical machine readable element uh, from the DCUC data structure and this is used to describe um, manufacturer related uh, content element. This element is actually not visible either for creator or for user of um, digital certificate of conformity. This is processed by technical application in background. So um, this element can be stated as a part of vocabulary with which technical application is taught the knowledge about product certification. A machine readable element consists of two parts. One of them, this is designation. And designation is very important um, because uh, it shall exactly reflect the content element being described. And this is the reason uh, why we um, chosen um, the standardized um, terms um, valid for um, our use case. And this is the reason why we chosen the designation manufacturer and, for example, not the client because we're digitizing uh, specific types of certificates according to the certification programs within the new legislative framework. And within this framework, one of the key um, um, actors is manufacturer and not the client. The second part of the element is so-called prefix, and this is a unique reference to the DCUC data structure. This prefix states that the manufacturer elements is part of the DCUC data structure and no other, and this manufacturer element uh, shall not be quoted with another manufacturer elements from, another, uh, from other data structures. In addition to such uh, machine readable elements, other pieces of information um, have been defined within the DCUC data structure. 
and I will show um, all of them on this slide. The first of them, this is the definition, and definition is very important because um, definition, a definition provides the meaning of machine-readable elements. Definitions are very important, especially for the reuser of the DCUC data structure, because they provide information of whether such machine-readable element can be used within a new use case or not. The next piece of information is a label. This is a human readable designation of machine readable element. And this is typically visible if, uh, during the creation of a digital certificate of conformity or if um, such a certificate has already been created. The next piece of information is attribute. Attribute um, realizes additional description of machine readable elements. So um, this is processed um, by technical application also in background. The typical attributes within the DCOC data structure, for example, um, language specification, such specification is used, for example, if one and the same um, certificate of conformity shall be issued um, um, in one or in, in, in more than one language. And the second typical attribute is um, so-called ID attributes, and um, this attribute realizes um, the interlinking of um, um, different elements uh, in background. The next is cardinality, and cardinality describes whether a machine-readable element uh, is an optional and, or mandatory element within the um, certificate of conformity, or whether such element can be used only once or more times within one individual certificate. And the next um, is the data type. We differentiate uh, between two data types, simple data types and complex data types. And data types, um, um, provide information of, um, about the form in which the content um, is um, added into the certificate. So examples from simple data types, for example, um, strings or Boolean values or dates, and complex data types are created internally, and um, they realize the description of a content element in very, very detailed form. As you can see here, uh, we have, for example, um, a complex data type called contact, and the contact realizes the description of a person, of an organization or an institution by its name, email, phone, location, and also um, additional description data. And now let us look at uh, the result of our work at DCVC data structure in its uh, graphical representation. As you can see, we applied a, a modular approach. So the DCVC data structure consists of the four part data structure. Three of them are universal data structures. It means that uh, they can be used to describe uh, all uh, instruments and all um, um, certificate, types of certificate that we considered in our project. And the fourth part, the green part, um, realizes the description of a specific um, type of conformity assessment. For example, type examination within a legal metrology or product verification within legal metrology or quality assurance approval, for example. Within my presentation, I would like to focus on the part data structure certification data, which is data structure about, I will explain in the next slide. So this data structure has already been created. And the green part data structure about the type examination within legal metrology has also be, been created in its first draft and is actually under the internal review within the PTB. And now let us look at the part data structure certification data. As I said before, this part data structure is universal and can be applied um, um, for um, different certificates and product types. And this data structure um, describes the main part of certificate, uh, including general uh, certification data, for, like for example, um, um, details about manufacturer, details about um, certification body, designation of the product, certification number, date of certification, and so on. And normally, the part data structure um, describes either the first page or the first two pages of a certificate. 
Certification data data structure um, includes a lot of um, elements and also data types, and some of them are um, supporting data types, uh, which um, can be um, split into uh, several um, sub data types. Um, not, not data types um, into several sub elements and in my presentation I will not present the full list of the elements um, but um, I will um, provide just um, some um, examples of them but for those of you who is interested to get more information about the full list of the elements please uh, look into our official document called specification and there you can find our motivation our scope and also um, the principle of definition for the data structure. And there you can find also very detailed des description of each um, um, element, um, including the graphical representation. The specification um, is published in um, 2023 and is now available in the um, repository of the European Union um, under the Nobomed document one. So uh, you can uh, download this document under the following link. And now let us look at the example um, elements from the um, part data structure. So the first example is a subordinate element called certification scheme. And um, certification scheme includes um, uh, the rules and procedures, for example, how an object of conformity assessment shall be described within a certificate. Certification scheme um, identifies, for example, a set of uh, specified requirements with which um, the object shall comply. And um, certification scheme provides also the methodology how a product certification shall be performed. This subordinate element is split into um, several sub-elements, as you can see uh, this on the slide. And uh, yeah, realizes a very detailed description. So the first element is so-called URI. And URI, this is a um, machine-readable unique identifier of the certification scheme. And if we um, look, for example, to certification scheme according to the European Directive for the Measuring Instruments, the URI is realized there as a so-called ELI. And by clicking on it, by click on it, we will automatically redirect it uh, on the web page of the ORLX, where we can find very detailed information about the directive as well as about certification scheme. So in addition, certification scheme can be described by the scheme owner. If we look into example, this is um, the European Parliament and the Council. It can be described by certification system short name. This corresponds to the short name of the European Directive. By certification system name, this is the full name of the Directive. By certification scheme ID and certification scheme name, which corresponds to module B, which is a type examination, but it could also be a module F or module D. Certification scheme can be described by the date, which corresponds to the issuing date of the European directive and by its version. So the version example isn't provided um, here because um, European Directive is a legal act and legal acts doesn't have any kind of version. So and now let us look at the second example. This is a superordinate element called validity. And using this um, element, um, validity related information um, within a certificate can be described. Depending on certification schemes, there are different uh, provisions um, regarding the description of validity. And for example, within module B or module D, um, it is prescribed um, to add validity begin and validity end. This can be realized uh, in the, within the disuse data structure by using uh, the elements valid from and valid until. And within the module F, it's sometimes not needed to um, provide any kind of validity information or validity information shall be provided in a free text form. 
and within the DCOC data structure, it can be realized by using the element description. So now let us look at the third example. This is a subordinate element called additionally applied documents. And using this element, uh, any kinds of documents uh, relevant for the certification can be described. So this ele element is a bit um, different than the two previous because it doesn't have its own uh, sub elements, but um, this is um, presented within the data structure by using uh, the complex data type called norm. And now let us look at the example, how the description of an um, OIML recommendation can be realized. So this document can be described by a description of organization, which corresponds to the OIML, by the norm ID, by the name, which corresponds to the full name of the recommendation, by the issuing date. Unfortunately, issuing date doesn't, uh, isn't, uh, doesn't provide it um, uh, within the recommendation, by the version, which corresponds to edition 2006, and by a clause. A clause, um, this element um, enables um, the inclusion into the certificate of conformity, any kind um, of, um, um, of uh, small pieces of information from, from the recommendation, like for example, a phrase, a sentence, or a paragraph, which is very important um, uh, for the certification. As I said before, complex data types are universal data types so that it can be applied for the um, description of more than one content element. So, and this um, um, characteristic we can use within the OC data structure to describe also certification criteria using the complex data type norm. And now let us look at the attributes and uh, within this slide, um, I would like to show you how an individual uh, DCOC element can be um, additionally described by using an attribute. As an example, you can see here DCOC element called content and this um, element uh, realizes the description of a small piece of content um, within a certificate. So as I said before, language specification, um, this is an example attribute that I would like to apply here. Language specification is used, for example, um, in cases if one and the same um, certificate of conformity shall be uh, issued in more than one language. And now I would like to show you how this attribute can be used to describe one and the same um, content with, um, using two languages. This is a small example. To realize this, two separate elements are created in the same content, but in different languages. And the adding of language related attributes to such uh, content elements um, will help the technical application to understand. Both content elements are about the same content so that they can be uh, processed together. And that's it um, about the um, examples from the DCUC data structure. And using my last slide, I would like to show you an overview about all elements and data types within the part data structure certification data. This is a kind of overview of everything that I said um, or explained today. On this slide, you can um, find, for example, the superordinate elements superordinate elements which can be split into sub elements you can find their simple data types and you can find, find here also the complex data types and also the elements which are related to such data types you can also find here um, elements uh, which are described um, by language attribute and so on yeah now I'm end of my presentation and uh, thank you very much for your attention.
So in this last part, I'd like to give you a bit of an idea of how an application use cases and an outlook for this project work looks like. So I think that's mostly what people ask after they actually saw this one. So this slide is um, also from a Novumet General Assembly. So it, it um, just pinpoints our state of work in 2023 when this first part of the data structure was published. And as Tatiana already said, this gives you a nice overview of what has already been done. And it always looks nice and, and some, some kind of sorted, but if you have to figure out where to put which information, it gets a bit difficult. And our first part to make it usable, that's something that I just want to remind you of because my colleague already said it, we have a specification for that. I will put the link to this document uh, into the chat after this presentation, so you can have it there as well. Um, and that's where we, where we start. So that's where we are. And only the question now is, and now what, what do I do with this? Um, first questions we normally get is what do clients or other interested parties see? So we are working as notified bodies. What do we send our customers and what will um, users or market surveillance say to this? And what do they actually get? Should I explain to them? Um, the next question is always, is it all? C can it be used for something more? Is it just a different way of um, giving information to someone else? And also what comes next? So what is the, the plan going on from here? So these are the three questions I'd like to focus on now. And the first one, I think, which is mostly the interesting part is what do clients or other interested parties see? And there, I actually want to step bit, back a bit and, and ask, what do they see now? So what are they getting now if they get a digital file? So I think all of you know these very typical file formats. We have a PDF, we have a doc or docx file, mostly it's docx or an ODT file, just for, for very simple file formats currently. So first thing I had to learn, I don't know if you knew it, how all of those are standardized. This is already a very good thing in, in machine readability and uh, digitalization because then you actually know where to find which information. So all of those are standardized on an international level. And then the second part that I actually didn't know uh, was the uh, two parts of the white set, uh, so the docx and the ODT file um, actually consists of single files. I am coming to why I'm showing you now how a word file is <laughs> constructed in a second, so please bear with me. But if you actually rename this file into zips, you can open it and you will find the, what we find on the right side. The interesting part, if you see this now, how a word file is structured, you actually have a separation into content. This is here, for example, media and the document XML. So just two parts, one folder and one file. And the rest is layouting. So it tells your word file how to present your uh, text, how to present single paragraphs, equations, numbering, and so on. All this is stored into this file. And when we discussed file formats, we saw this and said, OK, we actually have to do the same. We have to somehow give the machine readable part to the machine, but have a part that is still manageable by, by the human reader. And um, the uh, proposal we came up from this part here is, and that we discussed in the project group, was to um, actually use PDF A3 mostly. Um, PDF is human readable due to its PDF for, file format, but it has the um, yeah, function that you can actually store more information into it. So we can put, for example, an XML file in there and say, okay, we have a PDF readable for the human being, we have an XML just readable for the machine. And now we come to the next file format here. It's an XSLC. This is what makes your XML file, your machine readable file pretty. So in this case, we have in the XML file, the machine readable part, the information itself. And the XSLC tells you which parts of the certificate have to be where and how the numbering is and what should be bold or formatted, uh, centered or whatever. So this you can put in there. Um, as you've seen with the word structure before, we also said, okay, it's really nice to just attach figures because if you want to have a picture in a machine readable way, uh, it's normally not human readable element more. So you can code it or decode it, um, but it's not really visible anymore. So it makes sense to just put the picture in some folder and uh, in the certificate itself, you say, okay, 
picture one from folder X uh, or from pictures folder in this case um, to make it more relatable for machine and humans. Um, this way you can also have some attachments if you actually want to. And the nice thing, this is all in one file. So what the question was, what do our clients get? They still just get a file. But there's a machine readable part in there that can be used by, we're coming to that later, of the application possibilities in here. Before anyone protests, this is just an example with XML in the XSLT. This is one of the typical structured data formats. There are others, but uh, the approach would be the same if you, for example, say you would like to use JSON, which is another typical one. There's other options as well, but this is an open way of saying, okay, the same data in the same structured way, and you just have a different file ending and you can then, yeah, translate one file into the other if you want to. So having answered the first question, or at least for now having answered the first question, uh, the second question is where do we use it? Okay, so coming back, so we didn't want to just have it for the EU certificates, which are here demonstrated just by the type examination certificate, according to WMAC 8.3 as in comparison. Well, we'd like to have it on a national level, but I chose for this comparison here, the OMLCS certificate, just to show you, this is applicable outside the European Union and outside the legal metrology world of the European Union as well. We try to compare this. So the first part is always an easy part. So we have a few identical parts. One of those is the certificate number. So we have those in the EU certificates as well as in OML. Um, we do have some differences. So I think Tatiana show to you the element of manufacturer in OML, actually the first thing you want to enter as a co contact is an applicant. You also have a manufacturer field, but the first one is an, is an applicant. So sometimes certification systems do address different people or different organizations. So this is a bit tricky for us, but it's not unsolvable, but they are generally very similar. And then a very typical difference that you can find between those two here as well is uh, validity. So our OML CS certificates don't have a validity date on them. Um, but as you could also see from Tatiana, this is not an issue because we do have that from time to time in certain certificates in the EU as well, for example, in module F certificates. And um, this is already possible, even though it's a difference just on first sight. So we actually hope that um, we can address different certification systems with this data structure. And by this and also by other things, we can try to go into with this structure into certificate databases. So currently we do have in Europe certificate databases. Um, I do have two versions in here. So it's a Czech and the Danish database and they do have similar content, but they are not structured the same way. That already makes it very different difficult for a human reader to compare entries. So if you actually want to use or search something, it's quite difficult. Um, just within one certification system and using a described data structure, you can more or less harmonize those um, databases. As shown, this would also work with OML certificates. So you can actually have different databases in the same structure. And what that makes possible is to actually search throughout several databases for similar entries or entries of one manufacturer and so on to have an overview of certificates. And it does not stop in legal metrology. Uh, we have other international, for example, databases on certificates as well. Um, at PTB here, we are also a notified body for explosive atmosphere. So we had a look and the IECX database has very similar entries as well. So they're all similar and the data structure in a described way would make, give us a chance to actually harmonize those. And the last part of this and now what comes next is the question here now. I'd like to just give you an outlook of uh, what the project group is currently doing. So what we are working on now and what is the plan for the next months and years. So first of all, uh, I'd like to give you a glimpse in the module B results because um, this is something we have been working on before and which is still under development and, and under discussions. But I'd like to give you just an overview of how we would like to address this. What you can see on this slide is on the left side, 
you see um, the structure of the WellMed Guide 8.3, so the template for the type examination certificate. And on the right side, you see our superordinate elements from the DCUC MB, it is called. So you see it now here on the right bottom, there's a type examination green puzzle piece. And just to show you, we didn't change much. much. Uh, we changed a few things here in the general layout. So we said, for example, technical documentation or dec technical documents, uh, they actually belong to the design of the instruments, but they are more general information on the certificate. So we said, okay, we'd like to just extract it from there and put it somewhere separately. Um, for requirements, for example, on production, putting into use and utilization, yeah, it would stay the same. We need that element, we need that information, and it's still one coherent information, so it stays the same. The same goes for this checking of instruments, which are in uh, operation. This element will just remain where it is. Where we actually changed a bit was in the um, description of the measuring instruments itself, because we said, okay, often we find in existing certificates that you have this, this design the, uh, description of how the instrument is um, yeah, put up or set together, pieced together, uh, together with the technical data, as well as interfaces and compatibility conditions. So we said, okay, we should join this because they normally link to each other in current um, certificates as well. And we will remain with the, with the content, so we didn't leave anything out until now. We will have an, an element in the DCC MB, it's called in short, with the security measures as well as information on marking um, and figures. So here, just for your information, um, this will basically in most parts stay the same, but we'd like to just um, to make it better in a machine readable way to restructure a bit on the description of the measuring instruments. The rest, what are we doing now? So this is the module B, I already said, we're working on this and we hope to finish this, um, most likely in the coming year. Uh, we are also currently working on the types, not, not only on the type examination certificates, but also on the uh, certificates of conformity for quality assurance in the production process, as well as product verifications, also known as module D and F. Um, for module D, we finished a very, very first draft just to see how it looks like. And module F is still in, in, an, in another phase. As you might imagine, those are a bit easier to tackle than the type examination certificate because the co content is um, yeah, much smaller. So not so much content makes it a bit easier to digitalize it. At the same time, we're in the contact with OML, uh, CS, I put it in brackets because um, we had a presentation on the DCOC already in the OML DTG, so Digital Task Group, I think it is, a webinar where we presented this um, just to make it public that we could use something like this on an international base. And we're also discussing whether OML CS could actually themselves use this. As a, as a data structure for a better entry, for example, on the OML certificate database. There's a few more things to come. Um, we will see where, where it leads us when we finish uh, these parts and see how it goes on after that. And with this, I already come to a very brief summary before addressing any comments. Um, so what I like to, to for you to take back from this information is just the summary on the digital certificates of conformity. And this, first of all, it, this is a template. We're not providing any software. So it's still just a template for product certification, but it is machine readable. So it's much more structured and you have a better way of getting information automatically out and extracted and you can use it afterwards. What I also want you to take with you is it is publish the first part so you can use it and it also means you, you can comment. It's not like uh, we don't know that there's a few flaws in there, but uh, actually you can comment on this one. Um, and what I want to take you with here is it's, it's modular. So it is adaptable for other purposes. And that's one of the main ideas to say, okay, we have a general common piece in the age of digitalization. This is always important to have done some things that are really common and then have some specific information in, yeah, in there as well. So I think the modularity is one of our key features here. 
before I actually already start my presentation, a few comments on, on our behalf. First of all, a big thank you to the project group, Digital Certificates in Metrology in Nobomed, to all of the participants um, who are very active. We are always commenting on all the drafts that are all in under work um, now. If you have any questions here, just for the contact information, you can contact either the Nobomed Secretariat or as well uh, the DCUC project team at PTB, where I also have to state a little bit. So at PTB, we have activities that are partly funded and I just wanted to, to just give you this piece of information for clarity in here. 